I'm in London, which is the capital city of a place called the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, sometimes referred to easily as the UK. Incorrectly, sometimes referred to as Great Britain or just GB, and worse, just called England. Anyway, let's not get bogged down in country names. We've got a flag to explore. Oh, and by the way, for this episode, I need to be in the city of London. And while I'm currently in Trafalgar Square, I'm in the wrong place, because we all know that Trafalgar Square is not in the city of London. I'll explain more. This is obviously just an establishing shot. At first glance, this looks like the flag of St George, which is, of course, the flag of England, not the United Kingdom, uh, not Great Britain. But let's not get bogged down in details. You can tell it's different because it has an upturned sword in the top left-hand corner, otherwise known as the canton. But again, I'm getting bogged down in details here. Back to the flag. You'll find the flag flying on a number of buildings within the square mile, like for example here at Guildhall or in the Mansion House. OK, now it's time to delve into details which do matter, and that is first of all the City of London. What is it and where is it? The City of London is much smaller than what most people think of as London. It only occupies one square mile, or 2.59 kilometres squared, although I guess that doesn't quite have the same ring to it. If you've ever wandered around the central territory of the square mile, you may have spotted the City of London's crest, otherwise called the Arms of the Corporation of City of London. Sounds very formal if you ask me. You'll know the boundary as it's marked by these single dragons holding the shield. The proper coat of arms, however, features two dragons and can be found on bollards, tower bridge, Blackfriars stations, even on a police box. So that's the coat of arms that the flag is based on, but what about the actual design? It's made up of the England flag in the form of St George's Cross, but it also has the symbol of the martyrdom of St Paul, who happens to be the patron saint of the City of London. And just for added details, let's not get our saints mixed up, as Thomas Beckett is the patron saint of the wider London. Completely different person. Back to St Paul, and more importantly, why a sword represents him. There are a couple of reasons. First, from the Bible, in the book of Ephesians, St Paul talks about the armour of God, using the armour worn by Roman soldiers to describe the spiritual armour, mentioning that Christians are to take the sword of the Spirit. Also, in Hebrews, he talks about the word of God being sharper than a two-edged sword. But there was another story behind the sword. It was thought that the sword was actually a dagger, which was meant to commemorate the City of London's 1300s Lord Mayor, Sir William Woolworth. Woolworth was thought to be pivotal in the quashing of the 1381 Peasants' Revolt by stabbing its leader, Walt Tyler. There's a whole verse in the Fishmonger's Hall which covers this historic event. Brave Woolworth, knight, lord mayor, that slew rebellious Tyler in his alarms, the king therefore did give him in lieu the dagger of the city arm. However, sometimes later it was found out that the actual design on the crest predated all of this and therefore made this whole story completely irrelevant. Which sort of makes the point of why did I bother telling you. But it made a good story. If you want to fly the flag as a banner or long ways, then you'll need to get a specially designed flag because the sword has to always point upwards. The City of London flag, St George meets St Peter and they paint the city red. Actually, I'm not sure that that's the right expression here. Two saints engaged in riotous spree, flamboyantly enjoying themselves. <laughs> now that's an episode I'd like to see. Sorry. I need to just show you the, uh, the guys that have helped me with my stand here today. Thank you, chaps. I shall leave them to it. <laughs> 